first rule on investment is don't lose. And the second rule on investment is don't forget the first rule. And that's all the rules there are. I mean, that uh, if you buy things for far below what they're worth and you buy a group of them, you basically don't lose money. Warren, what do you consider the most important quality for an investment manager? It's a temperamental quality, not an intellectual quality. You, you don't need tons of IQ in this business. I mean, you have to have enough IQ to get from here to downtown Omaha. But, uh, but uh, you do not have to be able to play three-dimensional chess or, or be in the top leagues in terms of bridge playing or something of the sort. Uh, you need a stable personality. You need a temperament that neither derives great pleasure from being with the crowd or against the crowd. Because this is not a business where you take polls. It's a business where you think. And Ben Graham would say that you're not right or wrong because a thousand people agree with you. And you're not right or wrong because a thousand people disagree with you. You're right because your facts and your reasoning are right. Warren, what do you do that's different than 90% of the money managers who are in the market? Certainly most of the professional investors focus on what the stock is likely to do in the next year or two. And they have all kinds of, all kinds of uh, uh, arcane... Uh, 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 methods of, of, of approaching that, but uh, uh, they do not really think of themselves as owning a piece of a business. The, the real test of whether you're investing from a value standpoint or not is whether uh, you care whether the stock market is open tomorrow. Uh, if you're making a good investment in a security, it shouldn't bother you if they close down the stock market for five years. It, all the ticker tells me is the price, yeah. and I can look at the price occasionally to see whether the price is outlandishly cheap or outlandishly high, but but Prices don't tell me anything about a business. Business, uh, business figures themselves tell me something about a business, but the price of a stock doesn't tell me anything about a business. I would rather value a stock or a business first and not even know the price so that I'm not influenced by the price in establishing my valuation and then look at the price later to see whether it's way out of line with what my value is. What is the intellectual process? The intellectual process is... is defining your level, uh, defining your area of competence in valuing businesses, and then within that area of competence, finding whatever sells at the, at, at the cheapest price in relation to value. And there are all kinds of things I'm not competent to value, but well, there are a few that I am competent to value. Have you ever bought a technology company? No, I really haven't. In 30 years of investing, not one? I haven't understood any of them. <laughs> so you haven't ever owned, for example, IBM? Which Never owned IBM. Great, Marvelous great. company. I mean, a sensational company, but I haven't owned IBM. And so here is this uh, technological revolution going on, and you're not going to be it's a participant. gone right past me. <laughs> is that all right with you? It's okay with me. <laughs> I, don't any... have to, I don't have to make money in every game. I mean, I don't know what cocoa beans are going to do. I don't, you know, I, there are all kinds of things I don't know about. And that may be too bad, but... Uh, you know, why should I know all about them? I haven't worked that hard on them. In the securities business, you literally every day have thousands of the major American corporations offered to you uh, at a price and a price that changes daily. And you don't have to make any decisions. You have to make, uh, nothing is forced upon you. So you, there are no called strikes in the business. The pitcher just stands there and throws balls at you. And uh, if you're playing real baseball and it's between the knees and the shoulders, you either swing or you get a strike call on you. If you get too many call on you, you're out. In the securities business, you sit there and they throw uh, U.S. Steel at 25 and they throw General Motors at 68 and you don't have to swing at any of them. They may be wonderful pitches to swing at, but if you don't know enough, you don't have to swing. And you can sit there and watch thousands of pitches and finally you get one right there where you want it, something that you understand, and then you swing. And uh, So you might not swing for six months. You might not swing for two years. <laughs> Isn't that boring? It would it would bore most people and, and certainly boredom is... Uh, is uh, is a problem with most professional money managers. If they if they if they try to sit out an inning or two, not only do they get somewhat antsy, but their clients will start yelling, they'll start yelling, "Swing you bum!" You know, from the from the stands, and that's very tough for people to do. Warren, your your approach seems so simple. Why doesn't everybody do it? Well, I think partly because it is so simple. That uh, the academics, for example, focus on on. Uh, um, all kinds of variables. Partly uh, by because academics, you mean uh, professors of right, finance? Right. Yeah. The, the and data business, is there. in business school. Sure. The, and the data is there. So they focus on whether if you buy stocks on Tuesday and sell them on Friday, you're better off, or if you buy them in election years uh, and, and sell them in other years, you're better off, or if you buy small companies. There are all these variables because the data are there, and and they've learned how to manipulate data. And as a friend of mine says uh, to a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And once you have these skills, you just are are, are dying to. Uh, uh, to utilize them in some way, but they aren't important. 
uh, if I were being asked to participate in a business opportunity, would it make any difference to me whether I bought it on a Tuesday or a Saturday or an election year or something? It's not what a businessman thinks about in buying businesses. So why think about it when buying stocks? Because stocks are just pieces of businesses. And the most important thing to keep in mind if you're investing in stocks is what? Just always get more for your money than you pay. <laughs> it's, it's like buying anything else. And, uh, uh, you, you, What's and, the biggest and, mistake people make, though? Well, the biggest mistake they make is listening to a lot of other people and, 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 uh, and buying something because they think it's going to go up next week or next month. And for whatever reason people give you, you should understand what you buy. Now, if you buy a farm, you look at, you look at the farm and you say, I expect to get so many bushels per acre uh, of, of corn or soybeans, and you figure out how much that'll be worth, and then you figure out what the price should be. If you buy an apartment house, you look at what the rentals will be and what the taxes and expenses will be, and then you decide how much income you'll have, and you pay a fair price for that. But you don't, in stocks, people, you know, their neighbor whispers something to them, and they run out and spend money that it took them years to earn. So you always want to look at the productive ability of the asset you're buying, whether it's a farm, apartment house, or a, or a company, but the company is represented by a stock, and you, if you always get your money's worth, you'll do very well. The most important thing is to decide, is to be able to define which ones you can come to an intelligent decision on and which ones are beyond your capacity to evaluate. You don't have to be right about thousands and thousands and thousands of companies. You only have to be right about a couple. couple. I, I, I don't have to understand all kinds of business. There's all kinds of business I don't understand. But there's thousands of opportunities there. I did understand the Bank of America, you know, and, 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 uh, and I'll be able, I, I'm, I'm able to do that. Uh, in investing, there's no called strikes. People can throw Microsoft at me and, you know, you, you name it, any, any stock, General Motors, uh, and I don't have to swing. And nobody's going to call me out on called strikes. I only get a strike called if I swing at a pitch and miss. So I can wait there and look at thousands of companies day after day, and only when I see something I understand, and when I like the price at which it's selling, then if I swing, if I, if I hit it fine, if I miss it, 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 it it's, it's, it's a strike. But it's an enormously advantageous game, and it's a terrible mistake to think you have to have an opinion on everything. You only have to have an opinion on a few things. In fact, I've told students, if when they got out of school, they got a punch card, with 20 punches on it, and that's all the investment decisions they got to make in their entire life, they would get very rich because they would think very hard about each one. And you don't need 20 right decisions to get very rich. You know, four or five will probably do it over time. So uh, I don't worry too much about the things I don't understand. If you understand some of these businesses that are coming along and can spot things on, if you, if you can spot on Amazon, for example, I mean, it's a tremendous accomplishment what Jeff Bezos has done. And I tip my hat to him, he's a wonderful businessman, he's a good guy too. But could I have anticipated that he would be the success and 10 others wouldn't be? I'm not good enough to do that. But I don't, fortunately, I don't have to. You know, I, I don't have to form an opinion on, on Amazon. And I, do, I did form an opinion on the Bank of America, and I form an opinion on Coca-Cola. I mean, Coca-Cola's been around since 1886. There's 1 1.8 billion, 1.8 billion eight-ounce servings of Coca-Cola products sold every day. Now, if you take one penny and get one penny extra, that's $18 million a day. And 18 million times 365 is 7 billion, three less 730 billion, or, or, or 6 billion, 570 million dollars. So annually, 6 billion, 570 million dollars from one penny. Do you think Coca Cola is worth a penny more than, you know, Joe's Cola? I think so. So, uh, <laughs> you know, and I've got about 127 years of history that would indicate it. So those are the kind of decisions I like to make. And you may have an entirely different field of expertise than I would have, and probably much more up-to-date in terms of the kind of businesses that we're seeing evolve. And you can get very rich if you just understand a few of them and, and, and understand their future.